the Feisty News for Women. Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I present important women's issues and the feisty women disrupting our society to correct them. Today is February 6, 2022. Here's the feisty news for women. February 6 is International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation. Female genital mutilation is a surgical procedure that removes the woman's clitoris so that she can no longer experience the pleasure associated with sex. It is a painful and unbelievable practice that is forced upon little girls in many parts of the world. The procedure is painful and done with no anesthesia. The young girl bleeds for days and is often bedridden for months after. Although women despise the practice due to cultural tradition, they still pass down the tradition to their own daughters, allowing them to be cut. In Somalia, over 90% or more of girls and women have been subjected to female genital mutilation, or FGM. The United Nations has called for collaborations at all levels and across all sectors of society across the world to protect the millions at risk from FGM every year. In collaboration with the IFRA Foundation, the UN agency launched the Dear Daughter Campaign as part of the effort to end FGM once and for all. The idea is to get individual parents not to cut their daughters. Through letter writing, they pledge instead to protect them and support their right to govern their own bodies. Well, what does this mean for women? Well, when the practice of female genital mutilation is not no longer active, little girls will begin to understand that they hold dominion over their bodies and it will allow them to value themselves more. Many cultural traditions are rooted in misogyny and must be evaluated for their harmful nature to end the abuse against women. Spain's government minister for economic affairs, Nadia Calvino, made a stand for gender equality, saying she will not take part in any future events, debates, or official group photographs where she is the only woman present. The socialist-led Spanish government has made women's rights a central plank of its policies. The cabinet has 12 women and 10 men. What does this mean for women? Well, women in power often guard their position, catering to the men's requests to ensure that they continue to reap the benefits of leadership. Making this stand indicates that Nadia Calvino is demanding more women to participate in government policy that will impact their families and livelihood. What happened in New Orleans that caused a splash this weekend? Well, with five words, the message is clear. Don't carjack me, kids inside. Gabriella Barnitzer has grown frustrated with the recent number of carjackings in her hometown of New Orleans, Louisiana. To make a point about the city's latest surge in crime, she created car magnets with a message for carjackers, and those magnets went viral. Gabriella is with us today to share more about her plight. Gabby, what inspired you to take a stand against the crime you fear in New Orleans? Well, you know, I've been living here for quite a while. I grew up here. And now that I have four kids, hearing all the crime that's been going on, I was starting to feel very frustrated, very scared, very helpless. And I'm not a politician. I'm not in any position of power. I'm not in law enforcement. I'm just a mom. I'm just a citizen. And I was frustrated because I felt like I couldn't do anything. And it's very scary. You can't do anything, even get gas or run an errand without feeling, you know, like something could happen to you that's dangerous. So instead of just being silent, because that was my only alternative, I decided to speak out and make my own protest of sorts by creating a very simple magnet with a very simple statement that, please don't carjack me, I have kids in the car. And it wasn't in any way, my intention wasn't for that to be a deterrent or for, you know, I wasn't thinking, oh, this is going to stop somebody from carjacking me necessarily. It was more of a, a scream, a plead, you know, a statement um, to everyone around here that says this has to stop. You know, we need to do something about this. And it was my personal way of shouting that out. 
Gabby, your magnets are great, but we must understand that there is more work to be done. Do you have any thoughts on what could actually reduce the crime in the city? You need to start with early childhood education, with you know mentorship, with extracurricular activities for kids, opportunities, you know, because it's not going to solve the issue. It's going to curb the current crime spree, but it's not going to solve the issue, I don't think. Thank you, Gabriella. We need more women like Gabriella to take a stand and voice their opinions to improve our society. To purchase the No Carjacking Magnet, visit Gabby's online store at frustratedmom.com. YouTubers attack celebrities. Why are women of age quitting their jobs in record numbers? I'll be right back with the answer to these questions after the break. Hi, I'm Angelica Maria Chessimois, founder of Omekwa, and I have a very important message to share with you. What you've been told about self-care is wrong. Now, I learned the truth about self-care when last year I went through a three-month-long depressive episode. It was difficult, and none of the typical things you hear about self-care, like affirmations, nights in, spa days, none of that was working for me. But I learned that there are three main pillars to self-care that I use to bring myself out of it. And that's your body, your mind, and your spirit. So with this in mind, I created the Self-Care Success System. And at Omekawa, we have an exclusive membership community and service called Oasis, where you can get personalized herbalist guidance for your body, wellness classes and workshops by holistic experts for your mind, and a community for your spirit of women that want to see you grow and thrive. Go to omekwa.com where you can take our free self-care success assessment and find out the five steps to build your core pillar and create a lifestyle you deserve. Welcome back. Last week, a federal jury in Georgia ruled in favor of Cardi B's libel case against YouTuber Latasha Tasha K. Kibi. Kibi, most known for her popular YouTube channel, Unwind with Tasha K, has made numerous videos alleging that Cardi B was a prostitute, contracted herpes, and used cocaine. Tasha K was ordered to pay the rapper 1.5 million of the $4 million reward in punitive damages, a move that will set a precedent for other YouTubers. The jury found Tasha K liable for defamation and invasion of privacy. In November, Cardi B provided the case's judge with her results of an STD test to prove Kibi's malicious intent. Throughout the two-week trial, Cardi described feeling extremely suicidal following Kibi's allegations. She said that the online harassment following Kibi's claims made her physically ill, causing her weight loss, migraines, and anxiety. According to a report by Law360, Kibi, Tasha K, testified early in the trial that she dragged and targeted Cardi B, whose real name is Bella Calise Almanzar, to drive public engagement with her online content. Well, what does this mean for women? Well, Cardi B filed a suit against Kibi in 2019, almost a year after she released her debut album, which was entitled Invasion of Privacy. It took more than two years to reach a judgment. Most, most YouTubers don't have the money to continue to fight for that long. Many creators and public figures are attacked for their successes, successes, often by other women, which further adds to the division of the women's rights movement. How can we teach men to support and protect us when other women are tearing us down too? Tasha K, I know who you are. Everyone does. Your brand is spectacular and professional, and you have a voice that many want to hear. If you care at all about advancing our society, use that voice to uplift women instead of tearing them down. I understand that showcasing hatred and criticism of more successful people attracts a bigger audience and allows you to earn more income, yet destroying a woman's peace of mind just because she's successful in order to raise your own star so you want to reach her level, that will guarantee that you will remain beneath her. If you want to rise to her level, ask for an interview or do something great in this world. Tasha K, you're better than this. Be better. A survey of 2,000 women aged 45 to 67 across the UK experiencing menopause symptoms found that the lack of support from employers is having a direct impact on their decisions to leave the workplace. The women said it was the second most devastating impact on their career to date, 
only just behind having children. In 2019, 900,000 women decided to leave their job because of a mismatch between their role and menopausal symptoms, according to the CIPD Bupa research. More menopause protection in the workplace cases are appearing in court as women begin to understand that maybe it's not their fault. Maybe an employer is being unreasonable and uncaring. Sally Bartlett is with us today to share her thoughts on menopause in the workplace. Sally is the author of, damn it, it is menopause, Meditations for Women to Achieve Clarity and Confidence. Sally, can you help us understand why women are quitting their jobs and leaving their established careers in record numbers? What is going on? Hey, everybody. Hey, Tierica. What is going on is that women are experiencing all kinds of symptoms that are really difficult and confusing. And you, you're not yourself, like hot flashes, insomnia, trouble sleeping, brain fog, difficulty concentrating, mood swings. So if you had all this going on and more, you might be reticent to talk about this to your boss, right? When in fact, that's what you need to do. So women are kind of afraid to talk about this. And this is what I encountered when I went through menopause. I didn't want to talk about it and nobody would talk about it. So I started talking about it and I actually wrote a book, two books about it. Damn it. It is menopause meditations for women to achieve clarity and confidence beyond their wildest dreams. So the point is don't give up. Don't just quit your job. This is what's happening. Women are going like, I don't have any confidence. Who is this person all of a sudden that is not me? I better just quit because I'm embarrassed to talk about it. So we need to talk about it and get help and don't quit your job over it. Stay strong. Thank you so much for having me, Tierica. Thank you, Sally. I see that this is a case for women to understand that walking away may not be the only action you can take when you feel that your needs are being ignored in the workplace. Instead, speak up. Create those policies you want to protect you. It's your turn to be an advocate for you and for women. You can be inspired by Sally Bartlett's activism by finding her book, Damn It, It Is Menopause, on Amazon or visiting her website, sallybartlett.com. Thank you so much for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica, and as always, be feisty. Why? Women must be seen and heard.